I don't have to explain to people in Janesville what happened to the GM uh, plant here in 2008 and how many thousands of workers, lives, and families were impacted, how many people had to leave the community. Uh, but also here in Wisconsin, uh, as all of you know, in 1996, Johnson Controls shut down its Bruce City valve plant in Milwaukee, moved to Mexico, where they paid workers there 72 cents an hour. Last year, Johnson Controls threw another 277 workers in Milwaukee out on the street, moved to Mexico, China, and Slovakia, even though this company was making record-breaking profits. And that's the point to be made. As often as not, these guys are already making good profits here in the United States. You know, and it's just the question of making more money by moving abroad. 15 years ago, Briggs and Stratton was Wisconsin's largest private employer with 11,000 manufacturing workers. Today, it only has 2,500 workers in Wisconsin after it moved plants to Mexico and China. Masterlock and Tower Automotive now employ more workers in Mexico than Wisconsin. And Rockwell Automation has slashed its union workforce in Milwaukee from 6,000 down to just 300 as it moved plants to Mexico, China, and the Dominican Republic. That is the story of disastrous trade policies. And not only have these trade policies cost us millions of jobs, they have done something else that we don't talk about very much, and that has helped us into the race to the bottom. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. You take a look at the automotive, automobile industry, you know, there's some discussion. We are gaining jobs, new manufacturing jobs in automobiles and in other areas. That's good news. But what they forget to tell you is the wages of the new jobs are significantly lower than what the wages used to be. So you got an older worker working alongside of a younger worker, and that younger worker may be making 50% of what the older worker made. And the reason for that, and I'll tell you another story, in Louisville, Kentucky, piece in the, I think it was the New York Times, Louisville was, in Louisville, General Electric was expanding its manufacturing. And um, somebody said to the guy, well, you know, how come you're coming back into Kentucky here? And why are you expanding manufacturing? The guy said, well, look, we've looked at all of the numbers. And because wages are going down so much in the United States, we can hire people in manufacturing now for whatever it was, 11, 12 bucks an hour. Workers here are more productive than in China. You don't have to worry about transporting from China. So it pays to grow in Kentucky. Point is that our wages now are catching up to China's. That is not the direction we want to go in. All right. So what we have got to do is create a ent whole entire e economic program that works for the middle class. We should not see a shrinking middle class, a disappearing middle class. Yes, the very good news is the economy today is better than it was when George W. Bush left office and we were losing 800,000 jobs a month. But we have got to stop this shrinking of the American middle class where real wages, you know why people are angry out there? They are angry because they are working longer hours for lower wages. They have a right to be angry. They're angry because they're working two or three jobs to make a living. They've got a right to be angry. They are angry because they are scared to death about what happens to their kids. What kind of jobs are going to be available for the younger generation? Which, by the way, if we don't change this economy, this younger generation for the first time in the modern history of America will have a lower standard of living than their parents. That is the American dream in reverse. We cannot allow that to happen. And we will not allow that to happen. Yeah. So let me just, and, and by the way, you know, without being too political this morning, let me, oh yeah, I forgot, I am running for president. Yeah, all right. All right, let me be political. On the issues of trade, Secretary Clinton and I have very, very different perspectives. Uh, I have voted against and worked against and led the opposition against every one of these disastrous trade agreements. Yeah. 
Secretary Clinton has supported virtually every one of these trade agreements. And I'm glad that she's going around the country talking about the need for more manufacturing. Well, that's a great idea, but maybe she should have been there 20 or 30 years ago when we started hemorrhaging manufacturing jobs in this country largely because of a disastrous trade policy.